In this overview, we walk through the one-time information collection and discuss how to answer the questions. In addition, we also provide a tutorial consisting of examples of live walkthrough videos of information collection submissions. For purposes of this overview and tutorial, the second person, you, will refer to the International Section 214 authorization holders. Let's get started. On April 20, 2023, the Federal Communications Commission adopted an order requiring all International Section 214 authorization holders to provide foreign ownership information in a one-time collection. The order directed each authorization holder to identify its 10% or greater direct or indirect foreign interest holders that hold such equity and or voting interest or a controlling interest in the authorization holder as of 30 days prior to the filing deadline. The order required each authorization holder to certify as to the accuracy of the information provided. Who must respond to the one-time information collection? The entity or individual that currently holds the International Section 214 authorization must respond to the one-time information collection before the filing deadline. Will the FCC publish the results of the one-time information collection? All responses, including any personally identifiable information provided, will be made publicly available in IB docket number 23-119 and associated with the authorization holders International Section 214 authorizations in ICFS, except to the extent that any material or information is afforded confidential treatment. For more information about the Commission's uses and disclosures of such information, see https colon forward slash forward slash www.fcc.gov forward slash sites forward slash default forward slash files forward sor dash fcc dash ib dash one dot pdf. What are the consequences for failure to file a timely response? The Commission is currently considering in a Notice of Proposed Rulemaking in IB Docket Number 23-119 whether to cancel the authorizations of carriers that fail to timely respond to the one-time information collection and to impose forfeitures or other measures where a carrier fails to respond in a timely or complete manner. Who certifies to the truth and accuracy of the information provided in response to the one-time information collection. An officer of the authorization holder must certify to the truth and accuracy of all information provided in response to the one-time information collection. An officer of the authorization holder is, for example, a corporate officer, managing partner, or sole proprietor. What does an authorization holder need to do before starting the one-time information collection? The authorization holder should ensure it knows its FRNs and current International Section 214 authorization file numbers associated with each FRN. To determine its FRN, the authorization holder should visit the Commission Registration System, CORE's webpage at https colon forward slash forward slash apps dot fcc dot gov forward slash course forward slash user login dot do and search for the authorization holders frn using other identifying information specified in the course search functions review the commission's order and notice of proposed rulemaking fcc 23-28 and the Office of International Affairs Order, DA 23-745, and Public Notice, DA 23-746, addressing an exemption. Review these instructions and the FAQs. Review and understand the technical information as discussed below. Compile all of the information required by the one-time information collection before starting the form. 
have all the information required by the collection in front of it before starting the form. What technical information does an authorization holder need to know before starting the one-time information collection? The authorization holder should review and understand the following technical information before starting the one-time information collection. The filer is unable to go back to previously answered questions. The filer cannot go back and review earlier responses after moving to the next question. The system will provide a copy of the filer's answers to the questions only after the filer submits the completed form. A PDF document with the authorization holder's answers will be available only after the filer completes and submits the survey. Carefully review answers before continuing to the next question. Because an officer of the authorization holder must certify to the truth and accuracy of its responses at the end of the form, we encourage the filer to carefully review the answers to each question before moving to the next question. Copies of questions and responses. The authorization holder may save a copy of each response before continuing to the next question. For example, the authorization holder may print a copy of each response or take a screenshot of each answer before moving to the next question. Timing out after one hour of inactivity. The one-time information collection will time out after one hour of inactivity. If this occurs, an email containing a link will be sent to the authorization holder that will allow it to complete the one-time information collection. An email containing the link will be sent to the email address that the authorization holder used to log into the online system. If the email address of the authorization holder's certifying official was entered in response to question 3B beforehand, an email containing the link will also be sent to the certifying official's email address. Do not use the back button on the browser. If the authorization holder clicks on the back button of the browser or directly opens an embedded link, the authorization holder will be directed out of the form and automatically will time out of the system after one hour of inactivity. The authorization holder would need to either use the link that will be provided in an email to complete the one-time information collection or Use the link provided on the one-time information collection webpage to log into the system and respond to each question again, starting at the beginning of the form. How to open embedded links. To open embedded links in any part of the form, right-click on a link and select Open Link in New Tab. If the authorization holder instead directly clicks on and opens an embedded link, the authorization holder will be directed out of the form and automatically will time out of the system after one hour of inactivity. The authorization holder would need to either use the link that will be provided in an email to complete the one-time information collection or use the link provided on the one-time information collection webpage to log into the system and respond to each question again starting at the beginning of the form. If the authorization holder needs to correct its response to the one-time information collection after submission, the authorization holder can submit new responses before the deadline. If the authorization holder needs to correct its response after submission, it must use the link on the confirmation webpage at the end of the one-time information collection or in the email from the most recent submission. An email containing the retake link will be sent to 1. The email address that the authorization holder used to log into the online system and 2. The email address of the authorization holder's certifying official. The email will include a PDF copy of the answers that the authorization holder submitted in response to the questions in the one-time information collection. An authorization holder may find it helpful to retain the PDF copy of the responses if the authorization holder needs to correct its previous responses to the one-time information collection. An officer of the authorization holder must certify to the truth and accuracy of all information in the corrected submission provided in response to the one-time information collection. 
Such corrected submission will replace the authorization holder's previous erroneous submission. The Commission will consider only a filer's most recent submission of the one-time information collection before the deadline. What is the exemption and how can an authorization holder determine whether it qualifies? The FCC has allowed an exemption from completing the latter portion, questions 9 through 14, of this form if certain requirements are met. To qualify for the exemption, 1. The authorization holder must have filed an application for an initial International 214 authorization, modification, or substantial, not pro forma filing, assignment or transfer of control of the authorization that was reviewed by the executive branch agencies and was granted by the Commission on or after three years before the date of the filing deadline. And two, there are no reportable foreign interest holders of the authorization holder other than those disclosed in the application, including any amendment, and there are no changes to the reportable foreign interest holders disclosed in the application, including any amendment, as of 30 days prior to the date of the filing deadline for this one-time information collection. Type of application. The type of applications that fulfill the exemption are applications for an initial International Section 214 authorization, modification of the authorization, substantial assignment of the authorization, substantial transfer of control of the authorization. Who can assist the authorization holder with questions on the one-time information collection? One-time information collection. For questions about the one-time information collection, email the FCC's Office of International Affairs, Telecommunications and Analysis Division at fcc-evolving-risks at fcc.gov. FCC registration numbers. For questions relating to FRNs, submit a help request at https colon forward slash forward slash www.fcc.gov forward slash wireless forward slash available dash support dash services or call the FRN Help Desk at 877-480-3201, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Additional information regarding FRNs can be found on the Commission Registration System, CORE's webpage at https colon forward slash forward slash apps dot FCC dot gov forward slash cores forward slash user login dot do ICFS Additional information regarding ICFS can be found on the ICFS homepage at https colon forward slash forward slash www.fcc.gov forward slash ICFS for questions relating to ICFS, email icfsinfo at fcc.gov or call ICFS helpline at 202-418-2222, Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Requesting a retake link to correct errors prior to submission. If an authorization holder needs to correct an error on any question before it certifies and submits its responses to the one-time information collection, the authorization holder can send an email to evolving.risks underscore retake link at fcc.gov to request a new link to retake the one-time information collection.